guys, it's Jake Mace. All my links to follow my social media and website are down below. Please hit the like button, hit the bell, and turn on my post notifications, and subscribe to my channel. When I last met you guys, we talked about spinning the bow staff, not only with number one spin, but also a number two spin. And I noticed a lot of you guys loved those tutorials I put together. It was helping you out a lot. But the trolls out there were trolling me in the comments saying, what good are these spins and what purpose do they have? They're just a bunch of fake meaningless crap we don't need if we wanna know how to fight with the bow staff. They said these spins have no purpose in fighting and so they're just a bunch of frills and bells and whistles that have no purpose in the traditional Chinese martial arts. Every skill you learn and every skill your master teaches you when teaching you how to use one of the traditional weapons is important for not only the fighting, but also for gaining awareness and ability with the weapon. Think about professional golfers on the PGA Tour. A lot of golfers take a golf club they hook the golf ball and they bounce the golf ball on the face of the iron or the wedge. They can even pop it up and do tricks by hitting it out off the fly. You're never gonna see a golfer go in a tournament and pull the ball off the fairway and start bouncing it. They would get a penalty. But all those abilities to bounce and juggle and control the golf ball and have complete awareness of your club make them better at hitting a high quality shot that'll help them to shoot the best score in the tournament later. And with the spinning of the bow staff, it's very much the same thing. It will allow us to manipulate the weapon masterfully and give us better combat skills later on. So in this video, I wanna show you guys a short sequence we call kata or tao lu, and I want you guys to learn it, practice it with me, and then upload videos of yourself doing it or upload videos of yourself to Instagram and tag my Jake Mace Tai Chi Instagram page so I can see how you guys are doing training this sequence. Let's get started. I'm gonna show you guys this bow staff kata or tao lu from a few different angles and then I'll upload another video after this one on the bow staff talking about the traditional Chinese nature of the bow staff and teaching you guys some Mandarin in that video as well. So look for that one coming out a few minutes after this one posts. Put the bow staff on the floor and place your right foot here hooking it at the bottom. Stand at attention. There's a very basic beginner level form that will help you to gain the fundamentals and the skills you need later on when you do more complex bow staff work and fighting later. Bow, and notice how I bow with the staff. So bow, bring it up and look to the left. Open the left foot, kick it up into the left hand. Now we have to sync up the staff movements with the footing. Put it down, block outside the leg. Step to a solid bow stance, lock it down. Lengthen that back leg. Then thrust forward. And notice when I thrust, I spiral my right hand up, so I'm actually twisting the staff, rotating it under my armpit as I thrust to a focus point. You guys can pick a fly on the wall, you can have a candle lit, and try to hit that point and have good accuracy with your thrust. And the thrust power comes from your legs, so I wanna see you guys nice and low, getting this strong bow stance leg position. After that, they try to hit us, so we block it high, we block it low below the knee, step forward, lock it to the right with the left hand on top, block it to the left with the right hand on top. Then come up to natural stance and get your number one spin going and get that fluid pace. Let's practice some movement with the spin. So just take a few steps forward and each step is very particular. We want to have mindfulness in each step, just like Tai Chi. Good. Ending right there. Once I have that spin done a few times, I transition into a two spin and keep it going forward with the two spin. Take a few steps. One, two, Catch it, palms down. Step forward to a bow stance, block down. Thrust by twisting under the armpit. Oh my God, they're behind me. Turn to the right. Block this person down. 
thrust them from behind. Come up once again and begin our one spin one more time. Get that flow going. Take those very mindful steps. Once you've taken a few steps, transition to a three spin, which is a four spin with just one hand on the bow staff. Take some steps. I'm palms down again. Take my final step, left side forward, block it down, thrust. Oh my God, they're behind me again. Step to the right, lock it down, thrust. They blocked my thrust, smack them over the head. Very simple smack over the head. After this, we do our four spin, walking with each spin. So watch, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, sinking up top and bottom, right foot, left foot, right foot, then come out of it, block down, thrust, twist underneath the arm. They're behind us again, step through to the right, block down, thrust, but they blocked my thrust again. I need a different strategy of attack. Lift the right hand up, prepare for the smack. Step forward, smack to the head, rip it down. Step forward again, smack to the head, rip it down. Smack, rip down. Smack, rip down. Smack, rip down. Smack, rip down. As many as you like. Pah. But now they block the rip down. Rip up, take their staff away. I have more combat videos down below. You can watch that will show you some of the fighting applications of these moves. Step back. Protect your knee. Rip up. 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 Let it fall down. Guide it into the right foot. Finish where you started from. Bow with your staff. Open the hand and meditate into the sunset. Let me show you guys slowly with no instruction from the back view as if you're standing behind me in one of my in-person classes.
can click my link below in the description or comments to watch my next Bostaff video about the Chinese traditional terminology and traditional history and background of the Bostaff or the monk's staff. And if you want to get a Bostaff like me, there's a link below to order one just like this if you're in the US. At the end of your Bostaff training, I want you guys to always do three things. One is work on your spins. One spin, two spin, three spin, four spin, five spin, and then six spin and beyond are with a partner. That way you get the muscle conditioning you need, the strength and physical abilities you need to maneuver and work this weapon properly. After your spins, the second thing is to work on your horse stance, sink it on down nice and low, and place the bow staff on your thighs so that it doesn't roll forward. So even though I look low here, it's not low enough. I gotta sink lower till the staff stays still, then hold my stance. At least for, I would say one to three minutes at this depth. Back as straight as possible. Once you have the horse stance training done, I want you to work on your upper body strength and do so with push-ups, but incorporate your bow staff into your training. So put it on the ground right here. Put your hands in front of it. You can have palms or you can have knuckles. And I want you guys to slowly come down, touch your nose to the staff. Once it touches, push up. And do each push up very controlled and slow like this, taking your time and kind of embracing the pain of the push up. Push ups are better than bench press because it trains your core, your legs and your back, as well as your arms and your chest. And once you guys finish with that, treat your weapon with respect. This weapon here is not a piece of rattan. This weapon's a friend. And you guys have to treat your friend with respect. When you take your friend out, don't damage him. When you take your friend home, put him in his area where he has safety. When you're training with your friend, do so with respect. And these rattan bow staffs are the only one I'd have you guys use. If you guys use a typical staff that looks like hardwood or like a dowel that you would hang clothes on in a closet, they're the worst bow staffs to use because once they get hit one time, they shatter in half, they splinter and they break apart. Rattan is so strong yet flexible, it can hit hundreds of times before it even shows a crack. So always favor the living rattan over bamboo, over hardwood. Order one down below, and I'll see you guys back here for the next lesson. Hey guys, just wanted to make a little supplement of the bow staff video and kind of adhere to one of my 2018 New Year's resolutions, which was to teach you guys more about Chinese culture and Chinese language and Chinese history when I make these YouTube videos for you guys. I was gonna make this as a second video, but I figured I would just leave it on the end of this video so you guys have all the information in one place. I have a lot of videos from years ago where I taught you guys some basic Mandarin and how to write the fan ti zi or the jian ti zi, the complicated or simplified Chinese characters. But I'm gonna get back into that in the new year and I think it'll make us more well-rounded martial artists when we can speak some Mandarin, which is called Putonghua. And we also know more of the legends and the stories behind the Chinese martial arts and more of Chinese culture. So the reason why you'll hear a lot of martial artists refer to martial arts forms as kata or weapons such as the bow staff, things like that, is because in the Chinese martial arts, in the Korean martial arts, in the Japanese martial arts, some terms are universal, regardless of what language they stem from. Just like in English, we have a lot of terms in English that we use that we understand that have origins from other languages, like Latin, French, etc., etc. And even if you're a Chinese martial artist, you might refer to your forms as kata, or if you're in the eastern part of the United States, you look in the phone book or you look on Yelp, for a Chinese Kung Fu school, you'll have all the different martial arts styles will be categorized under karate. So in a lot of places, karate or karate is just the general umbrella term for any kind of traditional martial arts style. So when you guys are hearing people say karate or you're hearing them say judo chop or you're hearing them say bow staff or kata, don't take it too literally. 
relax and have an open mind and understand that within the martial arts, some terms are just universally used and more well known than other terms. So as far as the Chinese martial arts term for the stick or the pole or the staff or the bow staff, there's actually two main words in Mandarin that we use to refer to the monk's staff or the bow staff. The first one simply is Gwen. In Mandarin Chinese, there's a thing with the spoken word called tones. So you can't say Gwen, you can't say Gwen, you can't say Gwen. You have to say Gwen with that exact tone because the tone dictates the meaning of the word. Gwen. Gwen. Say it again. Gwen. And this term refers to a bow staff that's about head height. A traditional Chinese bow staff would be about head height, so I'm six foot two and I weigh about 200 pounds. So I would say my Gwen would have to be about six foot two. The second term we use in Mandarin Chinese to refer to a staff or a bow staff or a monk staff is bang. So say that, bang. Again, bang. Now again, very important, the tone. You can't say bang. You can't say bang. You can't say bang. You have to say it just like this. Bang. Bang. And this term is more so for like a stick or a bow staff that is a little shorter, maybe like uh, chin height or neck height, that would be more applicable to the one I showed you guys in this video series because the bow staff style I just showed you in this video is actually called si, ba, bang. Three words, si meaning four, ba meaning eight, and bang meaning bow staff. So in Chinese we say this hand position for ba for eight. E R san, si, wu, liu, qi, ba, jiu, shi. All right, so there's the verbally spoken two terms we use for the bow staff in Mandarin Chinese, Putonghua. We say Gwen, or we say Bang. So now you guys have a little bit of Chinese spoken language practice. Let me flip the camera around and show you guys briefly how to write these two terms in Mandarin Chinese. All right guys, so as you can see, for the head height bow staff, in pinyin, which is the alphabetized way of transliterating the Chinese characters, we say Gwen in fourth tone. That symbol means fourth tone. Gwen. And in the Chinese characters called the zi, or we say the jian ti zi, or the fan ti zi, depending on whether you study Taiwanese or Beijing characters. If you were in Beijing, you would do the jian ti zi. If you were in Taiwan, you would do the fan ti zi. For the Chinese characters of this word, we first write a tree, and stroke order is very important. Now, I have six to 12 years of formal Mandarin study through college and immersion in Beijing, but I'm still not the best at writing, so please excuse my bad writing, but stroke order is very important. So first we do a tree, which is a horizontal line. Then we do a vertical line. Then we do two lines coming out of the tree like this. Then we do another character, another radical, right next to it. We do this looking thing, which looks like the number four, if we were to write four by itself. Then we do two other characters. One does a line in like this, then it comes down and hooks up, and the next one goes in and then goes down and really arcs up kind of like that. And that's the very basic way to write Gwen with proper stroke order. Okay guys, and the next term for a bow staff is for the shorter bow staff. The one that you'd probably wanna use if you were training the kata or the tao lu or the form that you learned in this video previously in the video. And we say bang. And that's the verbal spoken, the putonghua, the Mandarin. Bang. One more time. Bang. Okay. And the zi, the actual Chinese characters for this word, also has a tree. So we start with the tree, horizontal line, vertical line, a longer line coming out, and a shorter line coming out. And that's like something made of wood or something made of the, of the trees. Next to it, we do a character that kind of almost looks like Taiji Chen, the Chen of Taiji Chen. 
we do three lines in a row. We do one line, a second line, and a third line, kind of different sizes like that. And then this line comes down and curves that way. Then this line comes out shorter out of the third one. Then we do one line short, one line longer, and then a vertical line down the center of that. And that's pretty much the basic way to write and the basic stroke order of the word bang. All right guys, so there's some more education, some basic education about Chinese language and the terms we use to describe the bow staff or the staff or the monk staff or any kind of a pole in Chinese Gong Fu. Now, there are four main weapons in Chinese Gong Fu. I teach 25 different weapon styles that I learned from my teachers, but the four main weapons within Chinese Gong Fu are the broadsword, called the Dao, the straight sword, called the Jian, the spear, called the Qiang, and of course the bow staff, called the Gwen or the Bang. And these four weapons are the basic four, like the big four weapons in the Chinese martial arts. But of all four weapons, the monk staff, the bow staff, the Gwen, or the Bang, are considered the number one. And the reason being is because the whole purpose of training Shaolin Gong Fu is to avoid rather than check, to check rather than hurt, to hurt rather than maim, and to maim rather than kill. So the goal is not to win, the goal is not to fight, the goal is not to be better than your opponent, the goal is to know how to fight if you need to. But only if you need to. And most of the time, we can always avoid rather than maim. And what better weapon to showcase that philosophy than the bong, the gwen, or the bow staff. The bow staff doesn't have a blade on it, it won't be cutting anybody to pieces. It can thrust, it can smack, it can chip bone, it can break bone, it can cause knockout. But it's not something that's going to decapitate somebody like a sword will. So it's more of a monk's compassionate weapon or compassionate answer to armed combat. Don't forget that within Chinese culture, there are many different ways to speak Chinese, such as Putonghua or Guangdonghua or Fujianhua. There are many different dialects in Chinese language, but only one written language. So even though there's many different ways to speak Chinese, there's only one way to write Chinese. And a lot of you might want to get into the calligraphy of Chinese, which is very, very traditional and very beautiful and is showcased in a martial arts format in the movie Hero, which I definitely recommend you guys go watch. It's with Jet Li and Zhang Ziyi called Hero, and it's a beautiful movie. You should definitely watch tonight if you can. Guys, if you guys like these kind of videos where I put little Easter eggs for you guys at the end, please let me know in the comments. Hit the like button for me and share this video. Turn on my post notifications by clicking the bell button down below and subscribe to my channel. You can order a bow step like the one featured in this video made of rattan at the link down below, and I will see you guys back here for my next Gong Fu lesson.